Hey guys, how's it going? This is Kenjis. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to show you a couple different tricks and tips that I use uh, to save time and things like that. So you probably noticed that I changed all my setup, uh, the way I have my tools and like the position and everything. So they added this new thing. Uh, it's called, um, what is it? A quick access. So the quick access uh, is this thing and you can change and you can change the way it looks uh, I can go here and then say how we show how to show so at first it comes like like this no so at first it comes something like this uh, where you can just uh, it doesn't have all of that it, it comes kind of empty uh, so let me see, create new set. Okay, so it comes like that. It has like nothing on it. And the cool thing about it is like you can add anything to it. You can add, uh, I guess here I have the zoom, hand. Uh, you can flip it, you know. For example, if I want to flip the, the canvas and have like some character here. Uh, I want to flip it to check if it looks good. I like to do that. So I just added it to the bar and you can do that really quickly. Uh, if I want to add a new layer, um, you can already do that here, but uh, I just put everything here. If you want to duplicate the layer, uh, you can just click that and it does it automatic. You don't have to like click, uh, right click and like uh, go for duplicate layer or whatever. Um, you can always have like, a shortcut, a key shortcut, uh, but sometimes it's just uh, easier to just have a little icon there. You can right click like here in the empty space and then quick access settings. And then from here you can choose whatever, right? You can choose a, a tool, uh, different things. Uh, for example, if you do more animation, you can just choose the add that timeline. You know, you can have a quick things like show the, the grid, like that. You can just have it and then you can it can change the way you show it. So I like to show it just uh, pretty small. Maybe not like that. I think it was uh, here. Okay, and then you can make it pretty small. And so it just looks like a, the, tool, the toolbar. So let's jump into this one, 3D models. Uh, it can be really tricky to pose the models, but um, they added this thing before, which uh, I didn't really have any use for. Uh, I thought it was kind of useless at first, but now it looks okay. Is this thing, it's all sides view. You can go to window and click on that. So pretty much it shows you the character from all the different sides. So and it's just the same character, just the, the, the way they show. So if I want to move this guy's leg, I can just choose, you know, click it there and see it from the side. I want to see how high the leg is going to be. So let's say I want to make it, okay, straight. So you can see already, it's pretty straight. Uh, and then you can see here, if, it, if you want to now move the, this thing, you can see from the side and maybe if you want to see from the top, if you want to, okay, there you can see that it's straight, but what if we want to move it to the side, like this way, that way, you can just go to this uh, camera view, this angle, I guess, and then choose to move it, you know, which way. You see, like here, it kind of still looks the same, but it's more to the side. So instead of having to move the camera to the sides and doing all that, you can just uh, you have all these different angles that you can see it and uh, if you're you know if you're trying to pose your character that's really gonna make it a lot easier something else uh, is uh, for perspective um, so you can make it your perspective layer and things like that whatever Something uh, I didn't know at first that's pretty cool is that you can you can make something like a shape going perspective. So if you wanna 
And if you want to like rectangle to go like that, you know, it does aromatic for you. You can kind of build like that. It, it kind of, it can be a little tricky because it snaps to different things. So maybe it snaps to this uh, vanishing point, right? It goes that way. Or, you know, maybe it goes this way. So it kind of changes a little bit. So if it moves like that, a little weird, like it kind of moves. Uh, that's why something's going to this one. So to stop that, you can just click this little diamond in there for that. So it will not go to that uh, vanish point. It's like you kind of negate that one. So when you do it now, you will only go to this one pretty much. If you want a perfect square like that, uh, you know, you just put the aspect rate, aspect ratio, like one to one. So it's pretty much same length and height, you know, do that for perspective. So if you want to do a perfect square in perspective, uh, there you go. You just do it uh, super easy. So uh, if you do perspective and things like that, you know that creating a perfect cube is really good and actually it's really tricky to do. So this really helps like you know, you can have a um, perfect cube and pretty good, pretty quick. So you just do that and then you just kind of mask the next one. And there you go, pretty much uh, you, you got this distance is, is the same as the height and that, you know, so you create that perspective pretty quick. So let's move on, so let's move on to another thing is this tool, the continuous curve tool, I think it's really good. Uh, and the way I use it, I use it for the outline of the characters. That way, that way they're really smooth and you know really clean. So uh, for this, I actually recommend doing more with the vector layers because they can change the size and things like that. So the way I use it is like this, right? I just go through and you click and you, you know, you will see, you just follow the, <clears throat> the outline. And it's pretty much you're dragging this line and you click a point and then you click it, not like every second, <laughs> uh, but you kind of see how the line is moving. If it's okay, see if, if I move it here, it's gonna be a straight line. So I kind of maybe decide to uh, go click a few times. Just following the the outline, you can see it. You know, as you go along, and you can press delete to kind of go back. You know, it delete that point. Delete there, and if you, if you press enter uh, or return, then it kind of uh, stops. But sometimes it's good to just do it in like one shot uh, and and kind of do the whole outline of the character. So something pretty cool, uh, Cryptid has this uh, cool shortcuts if you want to kind of save some time, like changing the brush side and things like that. The way I do it is like if you have a brush, the way it works is the way it works if you have like the brush tool selected and you hold. Uh, space space bar it becomes the hand right the hand tool so you know if you're drawing and then you want to move the thing you just, you while you're using the the, the, uh, the pen or pencil or something like that it turns into the hand and then you can uh, move it around let it go and co it becomes the brush again so you, you can just really quickly uh, you don't have to like go here and change too much so uh, if I use space, you know, I can move it around. But if I hold space and command, it becomes the zoom, right? So you can just zoom in and out. So, you know, I can just quickly uh, let go one, you know, click it. I just like lift my finger and put it back. So they're ho holding space. Now I press command at the same time, and then I can just move it around, I can use that. So uh, I don't have to 
you know, go here and then you kind of lose t a lot of time. You know, if you if you're drawing, I say for one hour, you know, you're gonna lose a lot of time if you keep going back and forth, switching and things like that. Um, so let's say command, I mean, first space and then command and space, does that one. Uh, the next one is right next to it. If you hold command and option, you change, you know, you hold it and then you drag this, you click and drag, right? It changes the size of your brush. So you can have it like that and then really quickly. Uh, that's more if you want to like eyeball it, like the brush size. Uh, that's what I've been doing like uh, forever pretty much. But now I recently started experimenting with just putting this here. And if I want something specific like that, maybe I want, I just change it like that. Um, but if you're using like a pressure, pen pressure, uh, like the G pen or something like that, uh, this is still pretty good because you, can, you know, you can still control it. You can press harder and lighter, but sometimes you want to make it a little bigger. So you can just hold that command and option and you get it bigger or smaller. You know, so it's good for that, I think, for if you have those pressure pens uh, or brushes or anything like that. So this one's pretty interesting. I showed it in another video, but I talked about it a little bit. So uh, most people, I don't think, really saw that. Uh, the thing is that you can actually remove these lines from the 3D model. So the way you do it, you can go to the... Uh, two properties and go to rendering settings so you can go here and here you have uh, different things like the way you show the shadows you can have the tune you know like more like cell shaded look uh, which I think is pretty cool uh, Fong, I don't know what that is but this one's pretty cool you can change it into that and also something else you can have the use texture you can Check it off, so you just you just get the character, right? You don't have you don't worry have to worry about the uh, thing. You can turn on the light source, uh, but it doesn't make sense if you're gonna remove the texture. But you yeah, can do that. Um, so let's say I have that. You know, it's pretty cool. You can have your characters. Uh, I made a video uh, recently about this one. You can have your characters like that, pretty cool. So something else you could do kind of related to this is you can extract the shadows from the character. Uh, and you can only do this in Cube Studio Paint EX. Uh, as far as I know, I, I think you can only do it in EX. But let's see, you can actually do this. Uh, what's it called? I forgot what it's called. Oh, you go layer and uh, LT conversion of layer or you can just kind of go on the layer here I think uh, yeah you can go click on the layer and right click and then you can LT conversion of layer so it does this thing uh, you can click here preview to see what it does so it would turn the layers into that and I like to remove these lines because they kind of make it look a little weird um, and you can change these like percentages and you can make it more or less and that's gonna in a way affect the way it looks and then you hit OK and you see what happens it takes a little bit um, and you can see here what it does is it separates each thing like you just separated the shadow and then the next layer of shadow and the next layer of shadow, right? So, so you can kind of use some of those if you want, right? If you want to use that, uh, you just maybe use the outline. Uh, so you can kind of remove the shadows like that. And now talking about this selection, when you select something, you get this uh, bar in the bottom that you can do different things. You can click here and pretty much add different things to it. Uh, you know, you can customize whatever you want. So uh, you can have the, here things that you wanna do. For example, when I select something, sometimes I wanna fill it 
well, different colors. So I just have the fill tool over there. I have the clear if I want to like delete it. I have the inverse if I just want to inverse the selection and draw outside. You know, so it will not, you know, just do outside. Uh, if I want to expand, you know, expand it by how much you want it, and, you know, something like that, maybe shrink it. And with this, crop, if you want to crop it or something like that. So this little tool is really good. And you can customize it however you want. If you want to deselect, I click here. But it doesn't have to be like this. You can make it like whatever you want. If you have, if you want to have like a, so you can just if they hold it like that. Uh, it won't draw the whole thing. You just gotta go for the specific uh, part. So blur. You just wanna go here and then you add it like that. There it is. So if you wanna add that effect, I can just do that. I use this thing. The the grid. The grid is good. Like if you wanna make if you're Let's say, you know, not everybody's gonna use like a 3D model or anything like that. Sometimes you just wanna draw like a face or something from imagination, right? So, uh, sometimes it's tricky because maybe you draw it and it comes out of like, like a little bit, like you probably don't notice. It's just like a little bit like at an angle and you think it's straight, but then you realize, or oh, you know, uh, it's not right. Uh, but with the grid, it's good because you can just keep the eyes at the same level, you know, nose you know, straight, mouth, and then, you know, it makes it a lot easier to keep, like, really uh, kind of, you know, things uh, in the right place. Okay, so this is a, a little bit for... Uh, if you want to change some stuff, um, maybe this is a little more for uh, beginners, but if, if, you, if you don't know, you can go here to Clip Studio and you can change a lot of different things. Uh, like preference, and then here you can change a lot of stuff, like the, the way the tools are, how many, uh, I think undo's you can do. Uh, for example, undo count, you can set it up how many you want. And, have 15 but you could put less uh, you could put how much ram you want your computer to use so depending how much you have uh, you can use more or less so if your computer is not too strong maybe you want to put this a little higher so you know maybe if the program is running slow you can kind of change that uh, and I think also if the 3D models aren't working that good. You can go here and try to put more um, RAM into the program, right? So you kind of change it there. And yeah, because I have a, some people asking me about that, the 3D models sometimes don't work. And I think it's, it could be a little bit with this. Uh, you can change these things, like change the color of things. Um, you know, like for example, like the, like the perspective rulers, but it's like a minor thing. You can, or if you want to have like this, you know, this uh, grid, you know, it will change those colors. Um, you know, shortcut settings, you can change your stroke, your shortcuts here. Uh, you know, tool, maybe you want your tool to be some, something specific. So there you just, Click, for example, pen. I click on the pen. You click twice. Uh, so you can hit, you know, press anything, any key that you want. For example, any letter or like, or how the letter B for the pen and things like that. And then you can just change it. Um, things like that. So you can have like a quick access to things. So that's pretty much it for the video. Just uh, some tips and tricks that I do. Yeah, maybe if you're like starting out or, you know, maybe you just you do things differently, right? Maybe this is uh, a little helpful or something like that. Uh, so hopefully this helps some people and, you know, to make certain things easier and faster and, you know, kind of customize things the way, depending on what you do, right? Depending how you work. 
uh, you may want to change, change things around. So that's going to be it for now. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and like the video and also share with your friends or you know anybody that's uh, into like digital art and things like that uh, maybe it will help them so that's it for now thanks for watching see you next time bye